Oh, well, that's nice. It's typical. So I wanted to use one of the fully charged show crew cars. Here it is. And it's nearly empty. So I've got to charge it. In the office, they're just saying, let the old man charge it. He's got all the cards and everything. I don't know which card it is. It's so difficult. If only there was an easier way of doing this. Well, the good news is there is. So I'm joined today by Patrick Reich from Bonnet, which is an amazing app that helps EV drivers access public charging a little bit easier. So Patrick, can you tell us about how you started Bonnet and what got you into this area in the first place? Yeah, so I was studying at Imperial College in London I'm an electrical engineer by qualification, and that's where I met uh, my co-founder, Elliot, and we were doing research in the vehicle-to-grid space. So we had a lot of exposure to the industry. We spoke with hundreds of drivers. We're EV drivers ourselves, and so we knew the problems that you know, come with EV driving. And what the media likes to refer to as range anxiety, for us, it quickly became apparent that it's charger anxiety because you know, chargers are plentiful. They're everywhere. It's just the user experience with accessing those chargers is what's always super difficult and causes the headache. Um, and that's where we sort of set off on the journey to build the first sort of user-friendly charging experience for EV drivers in this country. What made you create the, the program in the first place? What was the driving force? You know, I, I was walking around with, you know, five cards, RFID cards, to access the different chargers that I had to use, because I don't have off-street parking, I don't have a home charger, so I have to use public charging infrastructure. Um, and I was doing that, I had like 10 apps on my phone where I had to, you know, use some of them to find the chargers, use others to actually pay for the chargers, and then it was all just such a big headache for myself, and then when I spoke to a bunch of different EV drivers, it was the exact same problem. So that was the first sort of tipping point of us saying, okay, we're going to do an application that aggregates all of these charge points into one application, because there's no reason why you should be having to, to walk around with all of these different access methods. Um, and then the pricing and the reliability of things came on top of that. So pricing, ensuring that all of it's fixed across the board. So not only do all of our charge points cost the exact same, but it's also a lot cheaper than other methods of accessing those charge points. Um, and then the last bit being the reliability element, which we focus on a lot, uh, just ensuring that all the data is as accurate as possible. The, in the range of charges that you're talking about, are they from maybe a charge you'd find in a car park to a rapid charge you'd find on the motorway services. It, it covers all aspects of yeah, charging. Yeah, so it's anything from sometimes even a granny socket in someone's house. We have those types of chargers as well that people just upload, all the way up to, you know, 350 yeah. kilowatt the units that stand on motorway service stations. Yeah. Yeah. But is the idea behind it then that I have the Bonnet app on my phone and I go up to a charge point I've never used before from a company I've never heard of that I've never seen before and I go blip on my charge on my bonnet app and I can access that that charger. Yeah, exactly. So it's you see all the chargers from multiple different networks. Uh, it's also going to soon be not just public chargers, but semi public chargers, you know, in car parks and private chargers. Um, but it doesn't stop at the aggregation bit because a lot of companies just aggregate access to several charging networks and that's where the, it's a done deal. But we made a big emphasis from, uh, from the get-go on reliability because, you know, the problem, you show up, it's always a 50-50 chance whether or not you'll be able to use that specific charge point. And the other thing is pricing because today pricing, you know, everyone's free to set their own pricing. You can pay by minute, you can pay by kilowatt hour, plug-in fees, overstay fees, which doesn't really make sense to pass that on to the driver. And so for us, it's also a mission of standardizing pricing across all of our charge points. So all of them cost the same. Um, and the reliability aspect is, of course, another big thing where we do everything in our power to ensure that the reliability we pass on about charge points in the app, their availability rather, is um, as accurate as possible. So, and that's probably, I'm assuming, quite a difficult thing to maintain, the levels of communication to know that the charger that's outside Dundee yeah. at 9.30 this morning stopped working, you know, the signal from that, and you've got to put that into the app, and that's got to be a complex process. It is, and to be honest, I think, well, first of all, every charge point that you see on the Bonnet app, it, the data is coming directly from the hardware that's standing on the pavement. So there's no sort of like other APIs or third party. So it's, it's coming from the hardware directly, and we're the only app that uh, has all of their chargers that we display connected directly to, to the hardware. And so that's the first element. And then, of course, what we do in the background is add a lot of metadata on top of that coming from third parties, you know, like mapping services coming from community submitted data, and all of that gets sort of mixed up, and then the, 
you know, produced into the app to ensure that it's the most reliable um, data point that we can provide to the end customer. Because I'm just thinking, you know, you've got a really, uh, you know, very impressive technical background from your from your college education, and this sounds like it would be a much more political maneuver to get those charging companies to talk to you, to talk to each other, to agree on the on set terms. It's it has a kind of a snowball effect. So at the very start, it was you know just very long processes of talking to these companies, talking to the right people in, this co in these companies, and actually explaining the benefits of you know, a service like this. Because at the end of the day, for a lot of uh, charging networks, what's very important is that, or what used to be important, I guess, was that they maintain the front-facing, you know, user-facing application, and so that they can maintain the entire um, user journey. But now, um, I think they're more open to basically just as long as there's uh, volumes being driven to their charging network, um, as long as there's help that we provide them and value add from our service with them, they're a lot more open to partnerships. And now you see, you know, more and more networks, more and more companies joining services like ours. So because how many, so how many different companies have you got? So we have over 20 now, and this is not just the UK, this is equally a couple in, in Europe. So, I mean, can you sort of explain to people who maybe haven't driven electric cars what the advantages are? of having a system like this? Well, yeah, first, first and foremost, you can clean out all the cards from your glove compartment and wallet, and then uh, delete all the apps on your phone that you need for, for accessing the different networks, the different charge points. The, the two other big benefits are, of course, the fact that the pricing is just yeah. fixed. Because oftentimes, you know, you show up to a charge point and you only realize how much it costs to charge there after you're done after charging. After you've got the bill, You have yes. no idea, you know, yeah. per kilowatt hour, per, per minute, whatever it might be. Um, so that's all standardized, and it goes as uh, low as 25p per kilowatt hour, even on the rapid ones. Wow. Um, and then, last but not least, is you no longer have this 50-50 chance of coming to a charge point. You, you know, it's set available in the app. You came there 10 minutes out of your way, you drove there, uh, and it's not working. So there's less of that because of how we deal with, with the charge points that are on the app. They're all directly connected. Uh, we get live data directly from the hardware, um, and we're the only company that does that kind of uh, stuff today. Right. But that, that pricing thing is really fascinating. Yeah, it's, uh, we, we had to be quite creative. So it's not just a matter of like, hey, can you give us a cheaper price? It's how we work with all of our suppliers or the charging companies that we work with. I think that's where we are very different from other companies out there because we work very closely with the supply side. Um, we have direct partnerships. We have you know, bilateral agreements with all of them. Each agreement is unique and different depending on who uh, the partner is. Um, and within that, we have these mechanisms that allow us to essentially reduce pricing all the way down to. So I've downloaded the app, and then I do, so what do I do next? What's the next step? Do I, I just put my credit card number into the into yeah, the system? Pretty, I mean, you don't even have to do that. You can just use the app for just finding charges where they're located, their real-time availability. It's all free. If you want to use any of the charges, it's just a matter of putting in your credit card, uh, and then you're good to go. At that point, you're, you can just charge uh, pay as you go. So after you charge, we just bill you the flat fee, which is 35p per kilowatt hour on all the chargers. Uh, and then we have these, uh, what we call monthly refills, three packages where we have 50 kilowatt hours, 120 kilowatt hours, and 200 kilowatt hours. And what that means is basically you almost like, not subscribe to them, but we just put those kilowatt hours into your account in return for taking payment. And they sit in your account for you to use throughout the month. Uh, if you don't use all of your kilowatt hours, they just stay in your account and they roll over to the next month. If you need more, then you just you know, go on to the pace you go, but at the rate that your package is. Um, and the benefit of having the monthly refills is it works out quite considerably cheaper per kilowatt hour. And so in that circumstance, you, say you went to a charge you hadn't used before, but that's on your network, what do you have to do then if you've got the, the sort of monthly subscription? Can you just plug in and it literally you just plug in and that's it. So you don't do you need to get the app out and register uh, nothing? No, no, no. So you, you after you've registered once, it's just then when you're at the charger, you just have to find the charger in the app. Right. You, so you, you know, you go to it and then you, you plug in the main sort of um, goal that we have as a company is just the user experience to do with the charging in any way, shape or form. Um, and, you know, as long as it's user friendly and it's um, alleviate some of the problems that you have in a ZV driver when you come to a charge point and you describe all of this. Um, that's, that's what we're here for. So where do you see the, 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 the system going then in the future? I mean, presumably it's covering more yeah. charges. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, 
as many chargers as we can. So as I said before, it's not just public chargers, it's semi-public ones, uh, private chargers. So anyone can basically, who has kit in their home, in their business, in their car park, can just upload them to Bonnet and rent it out to the wider public. So anyone can become a charge point operator is the goal. And all of the charge points cost the same. Um, and then we also have a lot of cool things coming out like Bonnet Premium, uh, which is essentially uh, premium features like route planning, like direct car connectivity. So the app is able to read in real time the state of charge of 16 car models. Um, and we can do a lot of cool things with that. And then a so bunch of... Just so I understand that, that means that say you plug your car in outside a restaurant, you go in and... No. You're in, and you don't see the car and you're not near the car, but you can see that yeah, it, yeah. one, it is charging, and two, how much charge you've got on, and, on and the And not app. even just when it's charging. You, if it's just parked outside, not connected to a charger, and you're like, oh, how much you know, does my Honda e have? And then you can just see the percentage. Are you already covering some charges in, in mainland Europe? Yeah, yeah, we have like over 50,000 chargers in Europe already. Wow. We're just, yeah, and so we're building out supply set all across Europe um, so that when we do want to go into you, the European market, it's just a matter of just bringing all of that online. Yeah and then you know, just sort of allowing users to, to use it like they do in the UK. Because it will be interesting to see in the long term, like if uh, a charge company that sort of possibly begrudgingly gone along with your system and gone, yeah, all right, we'll do it with them. But you know, but we've got our own app <laughs> that's really annoying to use. And then they find that their actual utilization of that charger increases because people, because it's easier to use, no. then they might go, oh, actually, which is, I think, what's going to happen, isn't it? Yeah. So, no, I think it's important to not outsource the, the user experience or the f customer facing um, element of the whole business, but I think, you know, with a lot of these charging companies, they're very good at building the hardware or at least installing the hardware, tendering with local authorities, getting the partnerships with, with businesses. Um, and it's understandable that they just have to build out a massive network and, you know, they have to maintain it, they have to ensure that the uptime is there and that people can use it and everything's online. But the whole element to do with, this, with software and how users interact with those chargers, I think, historically has just been sort of skipped over. Um, and that's why, why we exist today, basically, is just to, to ensure that that uh, element, which is arguably the most important element, is also satisfied. No, it is, I mean, I think it is the. I think we're at a critical stage now, in the development of these cars, where a, a lot more people are going. I want one. I can see the advantages of it, and they've never used the public charging network. And they, they go up to their first charger, and they sort of hit a wall of misery and frustration because it's, you know, and that is just not good enough. You know, that's going to delay the uptake enormously. So it's really important what you're doing. I mean, it's a, a you know, critical. I think it's your, your timing is is spot on it's perfect I'm, no i'm really impressed by it it's very good so i think a lot of people are going to be really interested in this so where can they go what do they do to get the app well it's available on the app store and the google play store it's just a matter of typing in bonnet and it should be the first result uh and you can find a lot more information on our website which is joinbonnet.com i think it's somewhere in the front of the car as well um and there's also for fully charged viewers uh, especially there's a voucher code in the description of the video that they can use well, thanks very much, Patrick. Really interesting. Good luck with it. I think it's an amazing service. I'm really impressed with it. Uh, if you want to find out more about the Bonnet app, the, the uh, description box beneath this video has all the links in it. Uh, please do subscribe to Fully Charged Plus so you don't miss any of our fabulous organic episodes. And uh, that's it, as always. If you have been, thank you for watching. <laughs>